Hello viewers, due to some requests, welcome to the first episode of Game Senior Tech Talk. My name is Bryce and today I'll be addressing a question regarding installing power supplies into restrictive cases. Also I'll be reviewing a solution that I think addresses this issue. What do I mean by restricted installation? Well, some small form factor PCs or large scale vendors such as HP, Gateway or Dell, uh, they use cases that have smaller mounting brackets or non-standard ATX mounting brackets. Uh, so not all power supplies will work. An example of this was a client of mine recently uh, had a power supply die in their Dimension 2400, Dell Dimension 2400 I believe it was, um, and this problem with this is, first of all it's a non-standardized mounting bracket, so it doesn't fit all ATX power supplies, especially larger ones, but it's also the, the, the old Dells use a clamshell design for their cases, so Instead of it opening like a standard ATX case where the side panel comes off, it opens like the hood of a car. It pivots on the front axis, so the entire, the entire front panel, the front bezel, actually tilts with the side. And what this means is the five and a quarter inch bays and the three and a quarter inch bays are actually attached to the side panel. Now the issue here is it's very hard for somebody who doesn't know the dimensions of the power supply, especially ill-informed users, uh, generalized home users. Uh, to measure that distance between the back of the case and not only the back of the five and a quarter inch bay as it would come down, but any additional plugs, um, cables that they may have jutting out of the five and a quarter inch device, such as a CD-ROM or a DVD-ROM or whatever. And therefore, you know, if they go online and purchase a power supply, they're very liable to get a power supply that actually won't fit in the case. Not to mention, on the back of these cases, a lot of them have specific honeycomb cutouts on the back of the vents where they don't have room for additional switches or they don't have specific um, compatibility with other ATX uh, power supplies. Let me show you an example of a Dell Dimension 8400 and maybe you'll get a good idea of what I mean and then we'll be back in a moment. Hopefully you could get a good idea from that picture of uh, just what I meant about the the design of the old Dell Dimension PCs, the way they opened. Uh, let's take a look at a power supply that might come from one of these older cases. This is actually from the computer I was talking about and is dead, but as you can see, it's very dusty even after being brushed off. Power supply with 80 millimeter fan uh, switch for changing the uh, input voltage from 115 volts to 230 volts for European, European and American standards. Not a lot of leads on it, but do note that this is actually only a 20 pin connector, I believe, and 4 pin CPU connector. That was right around when they start implementing those, but these are important to note because when you get a replacement power supply, the power supply is going to need these connectors. Uh, most most power standard ATX power supplies, um, even low end models, do incorporate them at this point. And considering this is what seven years old, that really shouldn't be as much of an issue. Um, as far as ratings are concerned, this is actually a 170 watt model. Uh, depending on the model computer that you purchased and who you purchased it from. This may fluctuate, however, keep in mind a lot of those older PCs don't even need 170 watts. They'll run over 100, uh, you know, continuous power draw. Um, it's always good to have more, however, because these aren't all rated exactly the same. Now, when you're, when you're talking about a, a generic ATX power supply like this that you get from a large scale vendor, usually they're not of the highest quality and they don't meet all of the modern standards like this is definitely not 80 percent you know certified it's it's not highly efficient or even reliable as you can see it died after seven years good amount of time but they're they're not the greatest of power supply so for the most part what you replace them with can't be much worse to be honest but let's take a look at what i recommend replacing it with and as i explained earlier a little bit why. Um, I already took off the outside wrapping and this is actually one that I keep in uh, 
and in the workshop. But this is a fairly generic ATX as well. Actually, it's the bare minimum you really, really need. It doesn't have any extras. But it's an Athena Power 250 watt model. I think it's the MP. What is it? MP3S. I don't remember, it should be on here. MP3S ATX25, which probably stands for 250 um, model. And you can actually go to their site at www.athenapower.com. And you can take a closer look at that if you'd like. And they have these amongst some other products, but. For the most part, I keep these for isolated incidents when your case uh, won't actually support anything larger. But the case comes, uh, I'm sorry, the power supply comes with just two things. Inside the box, you get power cable, and I haven't actually opened this one yet. But the power supply itself. Now I'd like to note while I'm taking this out, this is not a high end or even a medium end, if, if I can say such, uh, ATX power supply. This is a very generic baseline power supply. This is for simple home use and you know people who are browsing the internet, who are writing some word processing documents and don't have a lot of expensive hardware that they need to protect. Also, it's not very efficient. You know, it's not 80 plus. Uh, certified. It's, it's a very simple device. 